God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us for this beautiful Sunday. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Today, we will be doing part three and the closing of our message series titled, The Call of God for Today. Our main scripture is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 5, which reads as follows from the God's Word version. Whether these rebellious people listen or not, they will realize that a prophet has been among them. Thank you so much for your replies on the message series. We appreciate it. We'd like you to keep on following us. Like us on YouTube or whatever social media site that you find us. Thank you in advance. Today, we will open up with Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 10, which reads as follows from the God's Word version. He spread the scroll in front of me. There was writing on the front and back. There were funeral songs, songs of mourning, and horrible things written on it. Let's break down this verse because this verse is so very important, my beloved. It says, there was writing on the front and back. Contrary to the state of rolls in general, in other words, the scrolls that they used in that day, which were written on the inside only, the Hebrew scrolls are generally written in that way. The scroll presented to the prophet was written on both sides because the prophecy was long and to the same effect that they might see the mind of God wherever they looked. It also says that there were funeral songs, which are lamentations, songs of mourning, which are groans, and horrible things, which are woes. What an awful collection, lamentations, and a groan, and alas, lamentations on all hands, a groan from the dying, and alas, or woe is me, from the survivors. It was the letter that kills and is the ministration of death. What a mercy to have that which is empathetically called the glad tidings or the good news. Christ Jesus has come to the world to save sinners, and he wills that all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Here are rejoicings, thanksgivings, and exaltation, rejoicing, and jubilation. My beloved, there are warnings even for us today. So in conclusion, let me say that we are being warned every day from the Word of God that we need to repent and turn from our sinful ways. Here is a general information or an announcement or notification what the instructions are and what the instructions were to them at that time, the instructions that were given to the prophet Ezekiel in the context of the book which was spread before him. One, his instructions were large, were great, for the scroll was written on front and back, on the inside and on the outside of the scroll. It was a sheet of paper written. One side contained their sins. The other side contained the judgments of God coming upon them for their sins. Note, my beloved, God has a great deal to say to his people when they have degenerated and become rebellious. Two, his instructions were Sorrowful, mournful, in other words, melancholy. Ezekiel was sent on a sad errand. The matter contained in the books was lamentations, which are weepings, moanings, and sobbings. My beloved, these words that Ezekiel brought from God, as they say, contain the phrase, woe is me. The idea of this message is taken from the impression it would make upon the minds of those that carefully attended to it. It would set them a weeping and crying out, Woe, 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 and alas, both the discoveries of sin and the denunciations of wrath would be a matter of lamentation. What could be more lamentable, more mournful, more woeful than to see a holy, happy people sunk into such a state of sin and misery as it appears by the prophecy of of this book that was given to the Jews at this present time. Ezekiel echoes to Jeremiah's lamentations. Note, though God is rich in mercy, yet impenitent sinners will find there are even among his words lamentations and woe. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 11 says, How horrible it will be for the wicked. Disaster will strike them. What they have done will be done to them. Oh, my beloved, what a hard time it will be to those that have lived in sin and pressed the sinfulness on others. They shall receive the punishment. But even those that inflicted punishment on righteous people, they will have punishment come back to them many times over. Beloved, word of caution, woe unto the wicked. 
Woe to the man who is evil in his heart, evil in his purposes, evil in his life. As the man is wicked, he does that which is wicked and is influenced by the wicked one, and that is Satan, or you might call him the devil, of whom he is the servant and the son. It shall be ill with him. In a single word, say to him, evil, evil. Of him, you can speak no good. To him, you can speak no good. All is evil in him before him, after him, round about him, above him, below him, evil in time, evil through eternity. Oh, my beloved, what a horrible time it will be in the last days when God sends his messengers to tell them about the tribulation that is going to come upon them. My beloved, the end times will be no joking time for anyone. Sin will be punished, and woe to them that This punishment is passed upon. My beloved, whatever a man deserves, he shall get. He shall be paid that for which he has labored, and his reward shall be in proportion to his work. My beloved, the wicked will receive wickedness, will be cursed and accursed throughout eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 13 says, But it will not go well for the wicked. They will not live any longer. Their lives are like shadows because they don't fear God. Wow, a shadow. His life, though it may seem long, yet in truth is but a wicked shadow, which will quickly vanish and disappear. Look at the most vile, evil people throughout history. Don't you know that they are in torment until the day of the great white throne judgment? And then after that, they will continue to be tormented for all eternity. The afflictions that they put upon other people, they will be receiving, and only a thousand times worse. My beloved, it is time to turn, to repent, and run to Jesus Christ for salvation. Be consumed in his grace. Be a participant in his sufferings, that you may have peace with God through the one that died on Calvary's hill 2,000 years ago for your justification. Don't be among the evil. Don't be among those that follow Satan for your reward will be everlasting punishment. So my beloved, we are as Christians to take the gospel of peace, that is peace with God through Jesus Christ, to this lost and dying world. That call has not changed. It is the same. It will remain the same until the end of time. If you are a Christian and you have been lacking in your evangelism, in your testimony to the lost, it's time for you to get back on track. Let me ask you this question. Where do you stand according to this message? My beloved, we are to pray for revival, fast, and study the word of God like never before, because the eternal destiny of many depend on it. But let me speak to you who have never received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. I would like to bring you to the point of repentance. My beloved, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord today, could be the first day of your life. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, won't you pray this prayer with me? But before I pray, allow me to say this, that you must be sorry for your sins. You must have a mind to repent of your sins. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of all power and and our majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. And if you will believe this today and repent, you shall have eternal life. Won't you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you a sinner. I believe that the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in the place of all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I believe this in my heart, and I confess this with my mouth, that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. And I believe that through my true repentance, and my confession of faith in Jesus Christ, and receiving him as my Savior and Lord, that I have become a Christian. And at the time of my death, I will go to heaven to be with him and every other Christian. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer and truly meant it from your heart, I want to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I'd like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to give you a Bible if you haven't one, and ask him to mentor you so that you will grow in the faith and you will be able to minister to others 
and bring them into the kingdom of God. After that, what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can contact us through social media, through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, or wherever you see us on the World Wide Web. But please email me at abundant.grace at att. You can also contact us through our website at AbundantGraceChurch.net. God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for being with us today. Today has been part three of our message series titled, The Call of God for Today. And in parentheses, the call never changes. From the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 5. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.